Hello everyone, Joe Brady here with another image edit for you and today we're going to take a look at a passing storm in a really cool place in southwestern Utah called Snow Canyon State Park. Kind of a hidden gem. I'll be heading back there this November. Uh, it's a great place and very few people know about it as you can kind of see from this picture because there's nobody there. But let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the histogram first. And you, this is the raw file, and you see from the histogram that the exposure is pretty perfect. Uh, it goes right up to the right edge. We had to protect the clouds up in here, and they're still looking a little too bright. There's a little bit of warning that there are things that are going very close to almost black. And if we turn this on and take a look, we can say, all right, well, where are the black things? If we zoom in, let's scroll. There, there they are. Some some places that actually probably really were solid black. So I'm not going to worry about those. But can this image be saved? And should it be saved? And I think there is a potential interesting composition in here. But if you look at the image right away, you can see that, one, there's too much sky. Yes, the sky was very impressive. And I really focused on making sure the sky exposure was safe so I could recover all this. And it really made the foreground go really dark. It was obviously nothing like this. This is, again, one of the faults of our cameras. They're not great when you have super high contrast scenes with a lot of bright stuff. However, let's go through and edit and see what we can do to make this thing work better. So usually I would start out with the basics here. But I think right at the get-go, I'm going to do some masking because everything is really, really out of whack here. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's do some basics first. I'm going to bring the highlights all the way down, which obviously makes the sky darker. Let's bring the shadows all the way up. Okay, that's helping a little bit. We could even turn the contrast down a bit. And then looking at the histogram, let's bring up the exposure and, you know, I don't like what that's doing to the image. It's making it flat, but we can, we can deal with it because there's going to be cropping going on. And as much as I exposed this shot to make sure that these bits of clouds were saved as far as exposure goes, you can look as I put the cursor over top of this thing that looks pure white. If you look underneath the histogram, you'll see that 97, 97, 4, 98, it means it's almost white, but there is data in there. That said... If you look at the image, it's right, it kind of split right across the middle between the foreground and the sky. So something's got to give. The sky's very cool, but obviously the subject is the foreground. So let's deal with that. Now, this sky actually looks okay. So let's go ahead and do a mask to do some editing on the foreground. So to do that, we go up to the masking panel. And unfortunately, I still have to choose sky because uh, background doesn't always work. So we're going to choose the sky and then click on the three dots and invert it, which gives us the foreground. Is it a perfect selection? No. If we zoom in, if we zoom into this interface here, uh, you can see it wasn't sure about this right here. Actually, you know, that background is almost kind of like sky anyway. I think I'm actually going to leave it alone. Let's leave it out. But let's go ahead and bring up this other stuff so I'm going to up the exposure on the foreground oh that's starting to look better uh, what else do we want to do let's add a little contrast back into it the temperature is off this is a very red place if you've ever been here so I'm going to push over to yellow yeah we're getting closer to light even a little redder maybe let's add a little magenta as well looking good uh, shadows let's open them up a little bit uh, highlights. Actually, the highlights are, I'm going to bring them up and I'm going to open up the exposure a little more because we're going to add a couple other filters that will bring that down. And that's going to be under our effects here. I'm going to add texture, which is going to add some fine detail uh, sharpening. Clarity, which is mid-tone contrast. Oh, that's looking better. And dehaze, which will end up darkening things. And yeah, you know, that's starting to look pretty good. And as I look at it, the saturation is still low. Let's bring up the saturation a bunch here. Yeah, that's kind of what this place more looks like. Now, as I look at the blacks, do I think they're a little too dark? Not sure yet. Let's just hit enter on that and see where we are. I'm going to use a command apostrophe or control apostrophe and create a virtual copy so that I can quickly bounce back and forth. I'm going to reset just so you can see that's what we started with. 
just when we started this conversation, and we're already here, so we're getting there. But it needs more. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and cut to the chase and start doing some cropping. This is about the valley here, and as cool as the sky is, there's way too much of it. So let's go over to the cropping tool. I'm not going to pick a standard size yet. Uh, do notice, though, that I have the golden ratio as my grid, not rule of thirds. You can find that from tools, crop guide overlay, there's golden ratio, that's what I use. And I'm going to put the top line kind of near the tops of the peaks there. And it's getting better, but we're still not quite there yet. I think we need some more pop and oomph and maybe some more saturation as well. So first we're going to do is we're going to do some light painting. Now, where do I want you to look? Well, I think this thing here is probably the most interesting, especially because it's down in the valley. Uh, this stuff forms a nice visual block as you go off to the right. So let's de-emphasize de some of these things and emphasize in here. So we're going to do that with some brushing. So create a new mask. We're going to choose a brush. Again, you can also just hit the K key on your computer. And I'm going to just pick some of these spots over here that I don't necessarily want the viewer's eye to go to. Let's see, what else? Where else do we want to de-emphasize? Make it a little darker. How about back in here? Let's add a little darkness on these to separate them out from the stuff that we want you to go to. And I'm going to bring some exposure down. Oh yeah, that looks a little better. And then let's hit, uh, this time I'm going to cut to the, cut to the shortcut, just hit the K key. And I'm going to get the valley in here, including what I think is going to be our subject. And yeah, these selections are kind of nebulous. And guess what? That's okay. Let's bring up the exposure a little more here. I am going to bring the blacks down to add some contrast back into it. The color seems, again, to be a little off. Let's add more yellow and more red. Actually, you know what? As I look at that, I don't like it because it now looks exactly the same as the rest of the image. Let's make it a different color. Let's make it a little bit, we'll make it not quite as yellow. And I will add a bunch of saturation to that. Now, you could say we could be done, especially when you consider that's what we started with. But let's take a closer look at this and let's go to full screen for a second. The question is, does the composition work? There's still too much sky and there's a lot of stuff that's mildly interesting like over in here, but it's not what the camera was focused on. The, the, the star of the show where the sun is breaking through the clouds is hitting this formation over here. We need to figure out what's the composition here. So we're going to do some cropping. I'm going to create two more virtual copies. Command apostrophe one, two. All right, let's take our first virtual copy. Let's do our first recrop. So again, if this thing is the subject, well, there's maybe, a, I, always, I always say you should put some foreground elements to give the eye something to lock on to lead you into the image. The problem is that this, this thing right here is maybe a little bit too large in the frame. So we're going to minimize that. I, as much as I love this little bit of cloud here, it's not about the cloud. So I'm going to bring our sky down further. And I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And I think something... Maybe about like that. Let's take a look and see how that does. So let's look at that full screen. And it's really going to change the feeling of the image. Yeah, we're doing better. Let's do one more. Let's get an even more extreme. Let's do a crop again. This time I'm going to come in further. I'm using my, my golden ratio here kind of as a guide to where we want to be. But by cropping down, we're going to make this subject to look a little bigger. By the way, I want to show you something else right here. Notice this little slope down. When you're doing your cropping, you don't want this line to end up exactly in the corner because if you do, it creates a motion out of the image. We don't want that to happen. Let's see. This is kind of interesting. I think what I'm going to do is come in from the left this time and put our subject on the left side. Now, this is a mistake. I just want to show you this. See how this, is, although it's subliminal, see this line? Rather than leading you into the frame, it's taking you out. So we got to make sure when we crop that it's either above or below the corner. I think I'm going to come up a little more 
and, and even further minimize that. And let's hit enter on that. All right, so let's take a look at our, our three choices here. We'll start with the first one. Here's the full image. Again, not bad when you consider what we started with. Then our first crop. Now that thing is starting to get bigger and it's starting to look more interesting. Let's do one more crop. And I think that's the answer. Now this thing here does more dominate the image. Could it use some more help? Yes. <clears throat> So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these images. Let's go into our, our, our viewer there. Okay, all three of those, and let's send them into a helper program. I'm going to send it into Viveza because this will make it easy to add a little bit of extra pop into this image as, as well as be able to bring back some of the saturation that is still somewhat lost there. All right, so here's our first image. This is the, the, the master, and you can see down the bottom it says one of three images, so all of them have been opened. And here's what I'm going to do. This is going to be a fairly simple edit. I'm going to add some structure, which really, uh, let's not overdo it. Just a little bit of structure. I'm going to add some saturation. I'm also going to warm up the thing a little bit. So if you can see, there's a slider here called warmth. Go to the left, it makes it blue. Go to the right, it makes it more red. And... So, wow, strangely enough, as I do this, I like it being a slight bit cooler. Huh, who would have figured? I think what I'm going to do is further make this thing pop out. Watch this. We're going to use a local control point. So you scroll down, click on this thing here. I'm going to put it in this area right here. So let's go ahead and put our control point in here. And what do I want to do? This one I'm going to warm up a little bit. And a little more saturation, a little more contrast. I'm actually going to bring the brightness down just a little bit because I think the highlights were getting a little bright there. And let's see. We can move this around and see. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Actually, I think we can be done. So let's use this is the before and after slider over here. Here's where we are. And you can see the edit we did just adds a little bit of pop. Now, this thing right here, I want to have it kind of be a secondary focal point, but not take away from here. So we're going to use another control point here, and we're going to bring this here. And this one we're going to add more structure to, which is going to darken things up when we bring down the brightness. But it's also going to add kind of more localized contrast. And if you like it, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag one over to there as well. There we go. All right, I think, I think we got it. Let's see, before and after, yep. Now here's the cool thing. I can scroll over and it's going to show me the same exact edits on all three of them. There we go. So now I hit apply all and it will build these in and give us, uh, in essence, TIFF files. So let's see what our combination of Lightroom Edit and a little bit of a Vesa tweaking has done for this image. And again, the exposure for this was perfect. I had to protect the highlights and the clouds, but it made the foreground so dark. I'm sure you've experienced this. So let's take a look at what we were able to do with this. Let's take a look at our three different edits. So here's the original uh, of all of the scene with the sky crop down. Does it work? Yeah, I think the primary formation is maybe a little too close to center, which makes it a little bit more stagnant. So let's take a look at one of our crops. Okay, so here's our first crop. A little bit better. The, the formation in the middle's got a little bigger. But I still think, although this is okay, I still think that the formation in the middle is too middle. Let's move it over to the left a little bit. And there we go. So we got in a little bit closer and moved the formation over to the left just a little bit. And I think we ended up with a pretty cool image there. It always pays to shoot more than you need because you can always crop it in. But protect your exposure so that you know you're going to be able to do the edit. Because obviously the scene stopped me to take the shot. And you can see the sun is clearly shining on that formation and all around the canyon here. But it just got really dark because of the way the camera exposed it. So that's it for today, a little kind of a, a little bit more advanced edit in Lightroom along with our friend Viveza from the guys at the Nick Filters. So thanks for joining me and I will see you online again soon. Till next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.